Um, the title of my talk today is Uncovering the Why in a Data-Driven World of What. And what I mean by that is uh, the key message that I'd like to share with all of you today is that analytics data, big data, doesn't necessarily have all of the answers. Instead, I'm going to show you how, by taking a much smaller approach and engaging with real customers and real people, that could actually hold the answers you need for making the best possible business decisions. Currently, you may know what your users are doing on your website, but do you know why? So, as an introduction to me, uh, I'm a user researcher, and that means that I spend my time talking with customers and users about their use of websites, apps, and other digital products. I also observe how they use those products and the problems that they face. I'm also a co-founder and director of research at Userfy, which is a specialist uh, user testing agency based here in Nottingham. And you'll be hearing a lot more about we do, what we do at Userfy uh, a bit later on in the talk. So when I thought about how best to give this talk, the approach I decided on was to tell you about how I became so passionate about qualitative research. Rather than just telling you why it's so great, I thought by sharing my journey and my experiences, you'd be able to understand and appreciate how I've actually developed this belief and this passion. But firstly, what do I actually mean when I talk about qualitative research and what's the difference between that and big data? Well, I think it ultimately comes down to this distinction. So big data tends to be wide but shallow, whereas qualitative data tends to be narrow but deep. Now, we live in a world of data. In 2017, we actually generated more data than in the rest of human history combined. Now, companies want to use that data for something useful, whether it be product development, business strategy, or marketing, or something else. The problem with big data is this. Often this type of data is based around an existing business model and existing ideas. It can be great for confirming what you already know, but it's poor for discovering anything new. Without connecting, without combining it, sorry, with qualitative research where you actually engage with users, you could be blind to some incredibly clear issues that your current tools just aren't capable of picking up. So, we now get to the most recent chapter of my journey. Um, in April 2017, we launched Userfy. And this was an incredibly exciting time for me because it meant taking everything I learned about doing research in an academic context and applying that to the real world and to industry. And here's what we do at Userfy. So we recruit people who match the key demographics of our clients' customers, but who have never used their website or their product before. We then hold hour-long one-to-one sessions with each person where we ask them to and to use the website and talk to them about their experience as they go. Importantly, we capture high quality footage, video footage, throughout the sessions. Um, and after it, all of the sessions have been run, we spend a lot of time re-watching those videos and cutting together the key highlights and the key issues. And these videos are an incredibly powerful way of communicating findings back to a client because it means that they can see the problems and they can see the issues with their own eyes. They can see what's happening and they can really empathise with the, the viewpoint of the user. So, with user testing, there's kind of a common misconception that it's all about usability, but actually captures so much more than that. Now, a website can actually be a perfect stimulus for creating incredibly insightful conversations with a person, um, allowing you to assess their understanding of things like your value proposition, their perception of your brand, and other bits like their needs and their, their previous experiences. So, I thought I'd share with you a couple of recent examples of work where we've, we've done this, this detailed qualitative research and I think it's produced some really insightful findings that we wouldn't have got using any other method. Firstly, uh, Amazon Regret. So we've been working with a lot of online retailers, um, relatively small companies where Amazon is obviously a gigantic threat to them. 
And interestingly, when it comes to collectors or hobbyists or people who are buying stuff as part of, a, of, as part of an interest in a hobby, actually, they're really regretful about using Amazon. They, they use it because it's, it's fast and it's really easy to find what they're looking for, but they don't feel good about giving them money. And actually, the experience of using it, it's got none of the, the detailed information that they want to see. So for example, with music collectors, it's got none of the, the detailed information that they want to see about an album. It's very, very kind of minimal compared to the old experience they remember of going to a record store. And actually, the, the experience of using a, a kind of an independent uh, website can actually be a lot more kind of fulfilling and remind them a lot more of what it used to be like shopping in a, in a record store or, or whatever it might be. And actually, what the real problem is, is, is just that search function. It's just being able to find what you're looking for. So I think that's a really, it's a really uh, kind of promising thing for a small company where actually it's not just items where people just need the convenience, they just need to, to buy it and they don't care where it comes from and you know how long it, they just want it to be there quickly. With these sorts of things where it's a particular interest for them, maybe they are looking for a more fulfilling experience than what Amazon provides. So I think that's really promising. Next, multi-device experience. So we've also been working with some financial companies. Um, one in particular was looking to develop a very long uh, financial application and their intention was to build this for mobile and they expected people to complete this entire application on their mobile phone and overwhelmingly what we found from speaking to people was that they just wouldn't do that that there's something about the fact that when, when you're using a laptop or a PC you've got a much larger screen you can take in all of the information and that's really important for people when they're making a really big financial commitment and that means that just people just don't feel right about using a mobile phone to do this, even if it's a very optimised experience where it's actually very simple to go through. Finally, uh, booking errors. So we've also worked with some travel companies and some accommodation sites. Um, and we did some work where we were um, testing a, a redesign of a website. And we found that users could actually book the same trip, um, double book it twice without realising in any way whatsoever. They went through the payment, they went through the confirmation, and it was only if they read through the confirmation they realised they'd booked the exact same trip twice. And the client was completely unaware of this. And it's, it happened because the users were using their website in a way that they just hadn't anticipated. And I think that comes back to the, the, the theme throughout all of these, that these are the sort of problems and these are the sort of findings that you just wouldn't get unless you actually spoke to people. They're not the sort of things that you would get unless you are doing this really in-depth, qualitative research. Big data and those sorts of tools just don't pick up these kinds of insights. So I've spent the last year with Userfy finding the why. And as a final thing, I just wanted to share some of the key things I've learned over that time um, about why this type of research can be so valuable. Firstly, engaging with users as early as possible can dramatically de-risk a project. Until you actually put your product in front of users, you're only relying on your assumptions about what your users want and what you expect your users to do. So engaging with them as early as possible and actually seeing and hearing their, their thoughts and their experiences and observing their behaviour can really make sure that you are in line with what they need and what they expect. Capturing a user's first impression of your brand, website or product is invaluable. Time and time again we see how valuable it can be to watch a user experience your brand and your website for the first time. That first minute or two is so critical for them in developing an understanding of your, what your proposition is as a company, who you are, and it's so, so fascinating to see how just little bits of information, how things are worded or how things are presented can sometimes just completely send them down a different path to what you would have expected and what you were hoping they, they would, uh, the, the, the kind of conclusions that they would, they would come to. No designer in the world can see their product through the eyes of a user who has none of their background context or knowledge. So being deeply involved in the design of a product 
means that you have so much expert knowledge and context about what that product is and what that product is for. And when a user comes to that product, say a website, they don't have any of that. They literally have what's in front of them. And no designer in the world can put themselves into the headspace of what that person is going to think when they see that. Um, it's just incredibly hard to do that because you just, you're, so, you're so involved that it's just, it's not, it's not you can't do it. Um, there are no shortcuts or substitutes for doing user research properly. People are always looking for ways to uh, make things faster, cheaper, and leaner. Um, but this doesn't really work with user research and with research. Dedicating proper time and proper resources to research is the only way to ensure that you are understanding the needs and the behavior of your users. So my final message to you all today uh, is this. Continue to use big data. It's incredibly important for your business. But I also encourage you to start finding the why. I promise you that engaging with users, speaking with real people, and understanding their experiences and observing their behavior will be the most enlightening thing you ever do. Thank you. <laughs>